In this video, I'm going to be giving you a world first full demo and review of the Close Guitars Apollo Pro bass. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel once again. If you're new around here, don't forget to hit that like button, hit the subscribe button and notification bell if you want to keep up to date with the latest from this channel and when I go live. In this video, I'm going to be giving you a world first look at this bass, which is by Close Guitars, um, a brand that specialises in carbon fibre, which you can see all over this bass. And I'm going to be giving you a full rundown giving you all the details, all the information you need to know, and letting you hear plenty of this bass as well. In a bit of a change from the usual schedule, I'm going to do this video backwards to how I normally do. So we're going to go straight into the tone demo first, so you can hear this bass in action and hear a range of the tones available from this bass. Then I'm going to run you through the electronics package and the specs of the bass, and give you my conclusions as to whom I think this bass would really suit. So without any further ado, here is the tone demo. Let me know your favourite tone in the comments, and let me know what you think of the tones overall available from this bass.
So now you've heard the bass, I'm going to run through the specs of the bass, run you through close as a company, give you some idea of what you can expect from a bass like this, because obviously it's a manufacturer that a lot of us bass players won't be familiar with. Um, and then I'm going to run through to whom I think this bass um, would be best suited. I will say that I was sent this bass, so it was sent to me for free. Uh, it will be being returned to close guitars after this review. Um, and the review will be fully impartial and I will just give you my honest opinions about all of the features on this bass. Um, but I just thought I'd let you know that ahead of this review section of the video. The other thing to mention is that this is a prototype bass, um, so things may change in the production model. But it's pretty much the last prototype and orders should look very, very similar, if not be identical to this bass. So this is the Close Apollo Pro bass. There are two models, there's the Apollo and the Apollo Pro. The Pro is the more expensive model. Uh, if you buy it from the Close website now, there's a 10% discount code in the description. 
um, you can check that out. But if you bought that without the discount code, that is $14.79 here in the UK or $19.99 over in the US. Um, that 10 percent discount code will work in both countries so if you want to do that you can do that the link is in the description right now but this base is the pro version so being the pro base this has some different features compared to the standard apollo which retails at about 703 pounds um, on the close website on both models of the apollo base you will find this carbon fiber neck which is kind of one of the staples of the close brand so the carbon fiber is really the defining feature um, and you're going to find that on the neck as you can see here and also on the electronics so the scratch plate here um, is fully removable all of the electronics attached to it including the jack socket um, and that too is made of carbon fiber uh, carbon fiber is a great material used in all sorts of engineering uh, principally because it's lightweight stable uh, and so it gives you advantages in a guitar for things such as traveling um, and also for gigging long term it's lightweight uh, and you can throw it around and it doesn't take much damage at all um, because it's a super hard super rigid material alongside the carbon fiber neck on the pro model you're going to get an ash body so this body underneath this finish here is ash um, the electronics are the fishman fluence pickups so these are different to the standard apollo model um, and whether they are an upgrade will be discussed in a little bit. Other features on this base include these ratio tuners, which means all of the tuners are geared differently, uh, which is beneficial and quicker, easier, smoother when you come to do your tuning. This tusk nut, which is one of the higher end features that you can find on any instrument. And the other thing you find on this base is the close bridge. This is designed by close, very close to a hip shop type bridge. Uh, it's machined out of aluminium and these saddles are brass which is probably the most premium um, saddle material you can get on any bass guitar. As you can probably see this bass is a little bit shorter than most basses but it's still a 34 inch scale length so it's a traditional Fender scale length. What we have is this shorter headstock which allows for better balance um, as well as making the bass a lot more portable. That's also helped by the fact that the body uh, is very close to the bridge so there's not really much get space between the bridge and the body end. As part of that 34 inch scale length we've got a 24 fret neck so that's two octaves um, across all the strings um, and as you can see here there's an extra little bit of uh, neck here which is where the body joins the neck. It's a really deep pocket which allows it to be a little bit more like a through body bass um, in terms of a lot of connection between the neck and the body. Um, and that helps again with the rigidity and the build and the way that it's locked together. The fingerboard on this bass is composite ebony. Uh, the nut width is 40mm so that's a standard jazz bass width. Um, and the neck profile is really cool. I really like the feel of this neck profile. It's a combination of pretty much my two favourite necks which is a C shape and a U shape. As you are down at the bottom of the neck it feels a bit more like a U. If any of you are familiar with a Fender Jazz from the 70s got a bit more of that kind of shape, a bit, bit more square uh, right around the edges of the fingerboard and then as you come up towards the 12th fret it really smooths out into a flatter rounder C shape. Uh, I think it's a really comfortable neck profile and allows you to have enough down at the bottom to dig in a little bit and a really smooth profile up on the 12th fret. It's probably a little bit bigger than you'd expect from most bases uh, of this style trying to be lightweight but because of the carbon fiber it means you don't really have to have less wood on the neck you can really just have the right neck shape that you want without sacrificing anything else so it's probably on the chunkier jazz bass side I'd say but again I really like the feel and the transition from the U all the way here to about the 9th 10th fret and then by the 12th fret you're definitely into more of a C shape territory. The other thing I should mention is that this cutaway here um, really allows you to get up to the very top fret um, without too much of an issue at all. Now one thing it would be remiss of me not to mention is that this space comes with this great gig bag and it also reveals one of the main features of this bass guitar. So this is the premium gig bag you get with the Colossus Apollo Pro bass. Not only do you get this good gig bag, it's got a nice amount of waterproofing, it's got a load of pockets, um, multiple different pockets here as you can probably tell we've got two or three pockets here um, with subdivisions inside of them and you also got this pocket here 
not only do you get all these pockets, this great dude bag, you get a load of accessories with the base. I've probably never had as many accessories. Um, you get a strap, which is just a standard strap with leather ends, but lovely to have it. Closed guitars, silent jack, the truss rod key, um, which is accessible at the top of the neck. Two closed guitars picks, and then two capos, along with this, which is a teeny tiny little screwdriver, um, shaped like well, a knob that you'd expect to find on a guitar. And that really reveals the extra hidden feature of this bass, which is that it's designed to be broken down into smaller pieces. Hence why this bag has this extra little section here on the side, which kind of looks like you'd expect for a double bass bow. So the idea behind this bass, uh, and one of its great features for travel and versatility, is that it's really simple to remove the neck. And that's why these capos come into play. Uh, you simply attach this capo here with this locking wheel. Uh, what you do is you attach it onto the neck on the first fret, screw that so it's nice and tight, holds the strings there, um, and then simply turn the base over, unscrew it with this supplied screwdriver, and then once you've done that, what you have is the body in one part, the neck in another, and the idea is that you put the body in this main part of the bag, you allow the strings to just kind of hang out a, a little bit, open this neck pocket up, and you simply slide the neck into here, and that means that you can travel with this like it's a backpack. So the base can be on your back, this traditional case part can be tucked away, uh, and you have, there we go, in that format, just a standard backpack uh, style case with a bass guitar in it. So those are the physical specs of the bass, and as I mentioned, I wanted to talk to you about this electronics package. Now, you've already heard these in action. Um, this is the Fishman Fluence pickup system. So we've got two humbucking pickups. It's an entirely active system, I believe. Um, so the pickups themselves are active, and it's got an active electronics package as well. As I say, two humbuckers that are coil splittable, so if you pull up this knob here, they become single coil pickups. And then we have this pickup pan pot here down at the bottom, uh, a bass EQ knob, uh, a treble EQ knob, and then this three-way switch, which is a voicing selector. So up here in this position um, is the classic position, as Fishman call it, um, which has got a bit more focus around the 2K range, um, and it's designed to be more like a passive Fender type tone. Uh, we then have the active mode, um, which the specs say is a 2.7K, um, center uh, and then the very bottom position is the active with a contour position uh, and this suggests that there's a boost at 7k and then a cut at 500 hertz in the mid-range so really that's typically going to be uh, your classic mode here um, like a passive vendor active mode suggests that there's a bit more dynamic range a bit more overall broadness but to me it sounds a little bit more scooped in the mid-range already um, and then the active with a scoop um, is a proper mid-range cut at 500 hertz and that's going to be your more classic kind of slap tone. So you've got all three of those voicings uh, as well as a bass and a treble EQ but this package does have a couple of shortcomings for me um, and the first one of those is that when you've got both pickups together um, so this is the passive or classic mode both pickups together um, there's a real lack of bottom end um, to me it sounds like the two pickups are kind of phase, phase cancelling each other out. Um, so typically on a jazz bass, when you have both pickups together, you get bigger, deeper low end and a bit of a mid scoop. With this, where you've got the two pickups together, you actually get a ton of mid range, but pretty much no bass or treble. Um, so I'm just going to give you an idea of that now. Um, and as well as that, you also get a big volume drop off. So this is just the both pickups. I'll do it in humbucker mode. Um, both pickups, classic voicing mode. And then if I then switch to the front pickup, you're going to get a load more volume and a lot more bass end. For me, that's a little bit of a shortcoming of this system, is that when you're panning between the other pickup settings, unless you're on entirely net pickup or entirely the bridge pickup, you're losing volume and you're losing bass end. So if I go to the back pickup now and just roll, roll it through, you'll hear there's a bit more bass end in the back pickup on its own, 
uh, it'll kind of cut out and kind of sound a bit funky in the middle and then back to the neck pickup you'll hear again more bass and come back so So for me, that kind of actually loses versatility. Um, the big idea behind the Fishman pickup system is that you have really easy switching between these voices. Um, but to my taste, they don't actually change that much. Uh, and some of the EQ points aren't quite right to my ear. Particularly the 7K boost on the slap mode, um, that doesn't quite work for me. Uh, in that when I'm mixing bass for a record, or even for live stuff, I'm never going to really be boosting bass at 7k, 8k is going to be kind of the max that I'm going to want the bass to sit in. In general I think I would rather have just had a, a passive tone control setup, a passive pickup system and been able to then boost that with maybe um, an active EQ, uh, more like a Sadowski or a Mike Pope style system. This system being all active I think it's trying to do too much and in that way you're kind of lacking versatility and rather than being able to just sweep those pickups and find the sweet spot um, and hear the EQ kind of dynamically change it really is a massive boost and cut between different things and that to me makes it less versatile than these pickups are meant to be. The other thing I mentioned is that the volume difference between the different settings is just so massive. Uh, with the tone demo you'll have heard that all leveled out with the Waves Bass Rider plugin. So there you're just really hearing the tones but here you're actually hearing the difference in volume as well. This is the active setting, uh, both big ups together, uh, split coil. And then if I make that a humbucking mode, big difference. If I then go from that to the front pickup, um, put that into single coil mode, and then put that into um, humbucking mode. That's a big difference in volume to me, um, and also changing between the different voicings is the same. That's the um, contoured voicing, um, and that's this is the contour voicing with the split coil. But what my problem is with this is that if you switch between each setting on a gig, you're going to need something like a Helix with a gain plugin um, or a gain block to dynamically change when you change the setting. So you have to kind of preset it um, and really be applying the right amount of gain correction to each setting. The other thing to mention is this bass and treble EQ. So now we're on the active mode, um, back into humbucking mode, front pickup only. I'm gonna boost the bass now. And then boost the treble. A little bit of hiss there. For me that EQ is just a little bit too low voiced, um, so that's just really boosting that bottom end, but the really bottom octave just a ton. Um, and I actually think in a mix that's not always too helpful. Uh, I think in the more passive or classic mode, I don't mind these boosts. treble boost as well. There I think they work well um, but in these other two active voicings I'm not sure that they really add any versatility I think they make the sound just a bit too blown out. Despite that I do think there are some good tones to be had in this uh, electronics package I just think you kind of have to really find one and stick with it um, which is really not the idea of this setup it's designed to be able to find loads of different voices really quickly um, but for my taste for my money I think you'd be better off with an active um, EQ and passive pickup options even with mini toggle switches between say a dual coil humbucking setup but the good news with all of this is that that is kind of part of the close business plan um, so talking to the guys there what they're looking to do is to have these electronics built into the base as a standard but if you want them to they can build you any electronic setup you want and the idea is that it's all attached to these carbon fiber pick guards so you ask for say whatever you want whatever brand it is whatever you love you can get them to 
build it onto one of these and they'll send it to you. In the discussion I had with them, uh, the idea was that you could have any knob arrangement that you wanted, um, you could have pretty much anything you wanted, uh, and it would all come pre-attached, uh, wired up, ready to go on a pit guard like this. Um, and the simplicity of it is you simply just pop that in, uh, ready to go. So that is part of the plan, it's not mentioned on the website or anything at the minute, but that is what they're looking to do going forward and to give customers that option to have whatever electronics they want. So having had a look at the specs, I'm just going to give you my conclusion and wrap up who I think this base really suits. Looking forward, if you're one of those people that loves to have one base that does everything, I think with the options that are going to be coming out for these bases in the future, uh, as well as it being super lightweight, easy to transport, really practical for travelling, this base is kind of tailored to you. It's also really well tailored to people that are just touring. I think if you're a touring bass player that is constantly on planes, I'd struggle to look past one of these. The people I wouldn't really recommend this bass to are people that like a lot of slap playing. Um, this little extension on the end of the neck for the neck pocket makes it really difficult to get in here um, combined with the humbucker. So if you are doing a lot of slapping and popping, this bass probably isn't that best suited to it. And in addition to that, uh, with the mid-range um, boost you get from having both pickups together, you can't get that classic massive bass and snappy top um, end like you can on a traditional passive setup um, when you've got both pickups dialed down the centre. Also, if you are just into more organic styles, more traditional tones, the fact that this bass doesn't have a passive tone control and the ability to roll off tone in that more classic way, um, I think goes against this bass. And if you're after Fender jazz bass type tones, uh, unless it's the classic bridge pickup sound, I also probably wouldn't recommend this bass to you too much simply because of the way that these two pickups blend. So that's my review of the Close Guitars Apollo Pro Bass. If you'll pardon the pun, I think it's really close to being perfect for me. Um, but yeah, just the electronics package. And with those options down the road, this could well be the one bass for so many people. Don't forget, if you want to try one of these basses, you can simply head to the Close Guitars store. Add the code in at checkout, Tyler Spicer 10 and you'll receive a 10% discount on everything um, in your basket at the store. I really think it's well worth trying out one of these bases, and I really can't wait to see what the company does next with all of these options that have been discussed with me in the process of this video. Thank you so much to Close Guitars for sending me this bass. Don't forget to let me know your thoughts on this bass and this video in the comments below. My Instagram will be linked below me now too and I will see you in the next video.